Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're going to be setting up a brand new altar. We're going to be changing my Imbolg altar for my Beltane altar. <music> Many of you will likely have noticed, whether from the missing video or from the introduction, that I haven't actually set up an Ostara altar this year, and that's because I just didn't really feel like doing it. So instead, I jumped straight from Imbolg to Beltane, and you know what? I'm pretty okay with that. For me, Ostara is not a festival that I really deeply connect with. It was one that I used to celebrate quite heavily, but now I just don't really care that much anymore, so I'm tending to focus on the festivals that I feel the most connected to. And because I am not attached to any particular religion, I can just skip festivals. Of course, if you're part of a tradition that requires you to celebrate set festivals, that's a different matter. But if you are more of an eclectic pagan, then you don't need to celebrate all of the Sabbaths or all of the festivals if you don't feel connected to some of them. You can just skip them if necessary, or if desired. Now for this video, I am really looking forward to setting up the altar. I have had my Imbolg altar set up since, well, February, and it is now nearly May. So I'm really looking forward to getting this all switched out. I actually created a whole new piece of art just for this altar. I finished it this morning, and I'm so looking forward to it being front and center. I really love including art on altars, so this is a big thing for me to be able to just create art, to put it on an altar. I'm just really, really excited about it. And also I'm looking forward to changing things up. Now a few things might look different from the last time you saw this altar, and that's because I've taken off some active workings for the purpose of this video that I will likely add back onto the altar in a few days to continue them. So because this is a working altar, things are not clean and tidy all the time. Things can get messy. I have candles that are half burned on the altar. I have wax dripped on the altar. That's kind of par for the course when you are using an altar as a working space. It definitely has a tendency to get messy. So please don't judge me for it being slightly dusty, slightly waxy, and and slightly messy because that is basically a description of my life 99% of the time. So with that being said, let's go set up this altar. The last thing to go on the altar is the incense. This is Kaunos incense, and this is probably the first altar of the year where this incense is gonna be present. I have a tendency to switch through and cycle through incenses, and Beltane for me is a really good time to start working with Kaunos, and so his incense is going in the oil warmer, and the old one is a little bit messy, I apologize for that, but everything that I have, I use, so everything is kind of a little bit messy. But this is essentially just a loose incense blend, and it doesn't really matter which one you get, as long as it's associated with the deity that you want to specifically work with. And I'm just gonna put a small amount on here. Now, this will last me for a long time because on an oil warmer, it doesn't actually burn up the incense, it just, crisps it a little bit. It makes it a little crunchy. So this will last a good few weeks if I just burn it every other night, every night, and it's just going to get nice and warm. So it's going to simmer the incense instead of burn it and produce lots of smoke, which I much prefer, especially considering we're coming into allergy season and I have hay fever really bad. So I would rather not irritate my sinuses any more than they already are. So I'm going to stick to using oil warmers rather than 
burning the incense just because it makes the most sense for me and it might do for some of you out there as well. So this is the altar all set up and I am really, really happy with it. Now I have tried to use pieces that I don't use that often. Now many of you will likely know that I am a creature of habit and I really like setting up my altars in set ways, which might be getting a little bit boring, but for me I really enjoy it. So at the back we have a goddess and we also have my god statue. And inside we have a tiger iron and we have a clear quartz. Now on this altar I like having both of them because it's really the first point in the year where we start seeing their energies colliding. So for me I like the dualistic representation on this altar, plus it allows me to put the art print right in the middle. I really wanted to create a piece of art for this Sabbath and I spent most of my night last night creating this one and I was so happy with how it turned out. I don't often do things in colour, I tend to stick with black and white, but I love the bee and the roses and the leaves and I just thought it was really pretty. So I finally get an art print slap bang in the middle of the altar. That's something that I usually don't ever do. Usually I squish it up this corner somewhere or slightly out of view, but this one is straight in the middle because I just love this print. In front of it we then have a slightly damaged plaque. Now I'll be honest, I am the one that damaged this. I knocked something in my cupboard, which is this thing, and when I knocked it, everything fell over and something crashed into the top of this. So I have slightly damaged the top here, but it's okay. This plaque is absolutely beautiful. I love it. We have a goddess and a horned god. We have a moon, a sun, a pentacle, the ivy, and then we have a triskelin right in the middle. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's so beautiful. And I don't have it out all that often, so I figured this was about time for me to set it out. Damage and all. I'm still annoyed at myself for damaging this leaf but I might just have to like paint over it with some gold paint or something. I'll figure out what to do with it at some point. For crystals I didn't go too nuts. There are only six crystals on the altar and they are all clear quartz. So we have four quartz points. These are actually facing the cardinal directions. Luckily I already knew where those were because of previous workings but you can work this out with a simple compass and then simply memorize where they are in your home if you do have the ability to do that. I then also have a phallic symbol on this side and I have a Venus of Willendorf hidden behind the hot incense burner that I do not risk putting my hand over because I will probably burn myself. But she's down there, she's like just round the back there, hidden away. So these represent obviously the dualistic energies that I'm going for on this altar. Please remember though, you do not need to represent dualistic energies if it's not something that you want to do and it's not something that you're comfortable doing. It's entirely a personal choice. At the very front here, we have an athame and a wand. I love adding these onto Beltane altars together. If you've been here since about 2019, you'll know that basically every Beltane altar has these two pieces in this way on the altar. It's just become a habit of mine to have those two together. And then lastly we have some cards. So we have two cards from the Forest Fae deck. That's this deck. I'm not sure if I've done a walkthrough of it before but I might have to do that in the future if I haven't. So the two cards that I chose were the Wild God and Walker on the Wind. Now these are two cards that represent kind of similar things. The Wild God says go to the woods to moss to mud to magic which I just loved. And then the walker on the wind says, the raven shows the way, be courageous, change and chance can bring exciting wonders. And I wanted to include these because it's all about progress, new change, new beginnings. So for me, these were ideal. And then I have a card from this deck. This is the Oracle of the Hidden Kingdom deck. And the card that I chose from this deck is the Forest Fairy card, which is all about reconnecting with nature. And then the last card is this one. This is the Abundance card from the Living Altar Oracle. I do have a walkthrough on my channel for this deck if you do want to see more cards from it, but I love working with these cards on altars. So this is really the focal point. This one is all about abundance, and I thought that was a really good choice for this season. So that is the altar, and honestly, I'm really chuffed with it. I think it looks really nice. I'm happy with it. I will admit that the plaque will move as the season goes on because I do have several workings that are currently active on here that I've removed for the purpose of this video that I will be adding back on again. So this plaque will kind of come and go depending on whether or not I have a working running. But generally, I'm really happy with this and you can even see my staff like right at the end here. You can actually see it this video. So yeah, really happy with how this turned out and hopefully I can keep it clean and tidy for the next few weeks at least. 
So that is the altar all finished and I'm so happy with how it turned out. I actually don't have that much working space so I'm definitely gonna have to be moving some things off. I know that the incense warmer slash oil burner, however you wanna describe it, will likely be moved off when it's not being used and when it's completely cooled down. And I know that the plaque is likely going to come and go depending on whether or not I'm doing active workings on the space because that circle is a perfect space to be doing workings. And so I do have a few that I'm gonna switch out for it as necessary and then I will add the plaque back on it again and that's just the important thing to note with this a lot of altars that you will see on Instagram on TikTok on YouTube a lot of them are highly decorative and that's really good but it doesn't have to be that way if you don't want it to be this altar for me is both a Sabbath seasonal altar as well as being a practical working space so while I might not conduct my rituals and my spell work at the altar, I will add spell items onto it to continue manifesting. And so for me, it's really important that the space is both pretty and practical. And so over time, I will move and shift the things on that altar so that it suits what I need at the time. If you set up an altar, it also doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to set it up all in one go. It's important to remember here that I prepare things in advance to go on the altar. If you are just starting your altar creation journey, you'll likely not going to have all the bits and pieces that you want straight away so it's okay to add remove and switch things out as necessary you can even dismantle and reassemble the altar if you want to just be sure that you check in with deities and spirits if you are directly working with them on the altar because my deities have their own individual altars i'm not too concerned about this particular altar because this one is merely representation versus ritual worship connecting with so for me i separate the two and that allows me to switch my altars out really easily if you are directly connecting with spirits and deities on an altar just make sure that you are respectful and that you give them warning before you just destroy that altar and then set it back up again completely differently because some deities and some spirits are going to want set things and they're not going to want you to mess with their things too much unless you give them pre-warning so yeah all in all the altar is now set up and I'm so happy with it. And it's just a little bit sad that I'm gonna have to take it down again in a few weeks to do my Letha altar because the summer solstice is another festival that I do celebrate very strongly. So it's a little bit bittersweet, but I'm looking forward to that altar as well because I just love having a gold altar. I think it's just so gorgeous. I just, I'm not really much for gold generally, but like a gold altar, that just sounds marvelous. And I'm gonna put loads of cards on it. I can't be thinking about this already. I've literally only just set this one up. Anyway, I hope that you did enjoy this video. Apologies to anyone who was expecting a different video. I realized quite late on that I got my dates mixed up. And if I didn't post this video today, I wouldn't have been able to post it at all because it would have been past Beltane. So I kind of had to do a last minute switcheroo. I hope you're okay with that. The video that I was talking about will be going up next week. I just had to squish this one in in the middle because I wouldn't have had time to do it otherwise. Okay, I hope you did enjoy this video. I've said that about 12 times. If you did like it, feel free to give it a like. It really means so much to me and it's a massive support to the channel as well to tell me whether you like things or not. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just wanna chit chat with the community, feel free to post it down in the comment section. The links to songs and to bits and pieces and decks and deck walkthroughs and deck breakdowns and playlists is all in the description box. If you ever have any questions about a particular video, you might find the answer in a description box. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I try to post my magical content every single week. If you would like to gain inspiration for your own altar or post your own altar for inspiration for other people, I will leave the Discord server linked, you guessed it, in the description box. And I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. Your names will be on the end screen in just a moment. So with that being said, I hope you have a marvellous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye! For crystals, I didn't go too nuts. There are actually only six crystals on this altar and, wow, my voice broke like a 12 year old. Love when they say it's okay. You, you love not gonna stay anyway. And you don't even know you're a slave. Yellow. Yellow again. Hi. Hello. What if I just filmed all of that?
and I have black lipstick on my teeth. Like, I jest, but legit, that might be a real thing, and I didn't check. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna go check. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I didn't. It's all good. It's all good. It's the danger, right? It's the danger of lipstick in general. Lipstick wearers will know this. I hate normal lipstick because it goes everywhere. I can't stand it. Well, it's not that I can't stand it. I just would prefer not to wear it. I like liquid lipstick. It's great. It stays on for hours. It's super comfortable, at least for me anyway. And the downside is it goes on your teeth. And once it's on your teeth, there ain't no way that's coming off unless you intervene. And um, yeah, I have filmed many a video where I have realized in editing that I have lipstick on my teeth and I've had to refilm that entire bad boy and it takes me forever. So I'm very grateful that I managed to do that without having lipstick on my teeth. I have a talk to go to. I have squished my day together in a really disorganized way. I basically just backlogged my entire afternoon. I have a talk to get to at 7.30. It is now 6.15. I still have to, no, it's not, it's 7.15. I still have to eat and edit this. It's Tuesday, by the way, so I have to eat, go to the lecture that finishes at like nine o'clock, and then I have to panic edit, and then I have to edit all night to be able to get this posted for tomorrow. So here's to hoping that I didn't fudge something up majorly and have to redo it because I really don't have the time to redo it. Okay, I am going to go now and try to chill for a little bit knowing that I have to edit because I don't like relaxing when I know I have to do things. Okay, I'm gonna go, bye. Mm -hmm.